This is DSO cell and oscilloscope, which is about the size of a small multimeter. And in this video I will share my first impressions. This is not a full review or anything, I'm just going to share some mainly negative things about this that I found out during the first day of using this. The very first thing is the power supply. Even though this looks quite portable, this needs 9 volt power supply and that's why I've attached this black box on the back of the oscilloscope. It includes two 18650 cells, a boost converter, DC power plug and a power switch. I decided to use batteries and DC to DC converter so I could use this as a mobile oscilloscope which doesn't need mains powered power supply. I could have used thinner lithium battery cells, but 18650s were the ones that I had available at the moment. Anyway, enough about that, let's continue with other features. One thing I like is that this uses regular PNC connector. For this test I will use this PNC to crocodile clip cable that came with this DSO cell. And like most other oscilloscopes, this has 1 kHz square wave test signal coming from the tab near the probe input. And I will use that to demonstrate some features of this oscilloscope. And we can see some of the nice features on the display right away. There are measurements including the frequency and duty cycle and some voltage measurement including maximum, minimum and average voltages. These can be hidden by pressing and holding the OK button. You have everything showing or nothing. And like you can see now the measurements has been stopped and I click OK to run the measurements again. This includes basic adjustments that one can find on just about any oscilloscope including selecting different triggering modes, automatic, normal or single shot triggering. And of course the polarity can be changed and the triggering level can be set manually. But in my opinion the rotary encoder is slow. Here on the right side of the screen you can see the pointer that shows the triggering level and it's not moving really fast, isn't it? And of course you can change the seconds per division setting. Click the sectiv button and rotate the rotary encoder and the settings will change. But I must say this noise you can see on the signal, it may be coming from the boost converter inside my battery pack, so I will not review the signal quality, at least in this video. Another feature where the slow rotary encoder has a huge effect is horizontal offset. I can change the horizontal offset by clicking the Sectiv button again, so that the small bar on the top of the display gets selected. Then when I rotate the rotary encoder, the signal moves really slow. It's really pain in the ass to move the offset from one end to another. And a tip for other users of this DSO cell, don't move the rotary encoder too fast. It actually goes slower if you rotate it too fast. The vertical offset can also be changed to do that. I'll click V div button until the offset indicator on the left side of the display gets selected. And at least it feels like it moves faster than the horizontal offset compared to the changes that I would probably need in the future measurements. Now the measurements are on the display and the scope is in hold mode. If I change the seconds per division setting, the signal will stay the same. And if I change the volts per division setting, the signal on the display will stay the same. And the readings will change. And these readings are of course false readings. And this can be confusing if the user doesn't know that this bug exists. When the user changes the seconds per division setting to longer than 500 milliseconds, this oscilloscope will go to continuous measurement mode where the signal keeps moving to the left, new readings will come from the right and oldest on the left will get deleted. And I will demonstrate this by using this 3.6 volt battery. I will connect this battery to the input of the oscilloscope and like you can see the signal doesn't respond. But wait a few seconds, the signal on the display has been delayed by about 12 seconds from the real time. Like you can see here I've connected the battery and that is because there's 12 divisions of the signal visible on the display and there's same 12 divisions before and after the part that is visible on the display. Like I said it's pain in the ass to scroll to the end of the horizontal offset setting. You have to just trust me there's signal before and after the signal that is shown on the display by default. 
the seconds per division setting is 1 second and it took about 12 seconds before I saw the signal on the display so I guess there's the 12 divisions outside of the display as well. I wish there was a way to move quickly to the one end of the horizontal offset setting that would make this long duration measurement more useful at least for me. Even though I concentrated on the negative things on this video, I really like this portable oscilloscope, especially considering the 25 bucks price that I paid for this. Remember to show your support and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already.